So hello everyone and welcome back to a series of short conversations with the Royal College of Nursing in Wales about pay. So I'm your host Vicky Killington, information specialist and librarian based in Wales and today we're really branching out. I'm delighted to introduce a colleague from Scotland, Colin Pullman. Colin, thank you for joining us. Hello. Would you like to tell us maybe a little bit about your background, Colin? Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I'm the, currently the Associate Director for Pay Terms and Conditions in RCN Scotland. Uh, I've been with RCN for uh, a good number of years, I'm not going to admit how long, um, and I've, I've spent um, a, a lot of the last number of years dealing with our um, Pay Terms and Conditions here in Scotland, um, representing the College of various committees, but the main Committee, which is the Scottish Terms and Conditions Committee, it's shortened to stack. Uh, I represent the RCN with other colleagues uh, on that committee, which is made up of the other trade unions and meets with the Scottish Government and NHS employers to talk about all things pay terms and conditions. Excellent. Well, you are just the right person to have joining us today and your starter for 10. Could you tell us about the pay process in Scotland and maybe explain for the people who are viewing how that's been different from the process in Wales and why that is. Okay, well the process in Scotland has been different this year because the Scottish Government made a decision that they weren't going to participate in the pay review body process. The pay review body process is the process in, until 2018 um, all four countries participated in, which is where we put our evidence in uh, to an independent pay review body, all the trade unions in all the countries, and then they they come out with um, recommendations to the various governments uh, and um, recommendations to the various governments and executives in the four countries. However, um, due to the Scottish Government making a decision this year, that they, or should I say uh, the middle of last year, they made a decision that they weren't going to participate in the pay review body and indeed instead wished to talk about having direct negotiations with the health trade unions in Scotland um, through STAC. Um, that process has taken a long time to actually get to um, negotiations and didn't actually happen until March of this year um, because although the Scottish Government had said they weren't participating in the, the pay review body, they didn't actually move very quickly with negotiations until just um, three weeks before the um, Scottish Parliament uh, was due to rise before the Scottish parliamentary elections. And we had some um, elections over here too. So... That's a really comprehensive answer. And I guess after you've done all that work, why did the RCN advise its members in Scotland to reject the offer? Well, um, pay negotiations are very complex and they're very complex in relation to when you go in with them. All the different trade unions had different positions in relation to where they, they believe pay should be. We're very clear where pay should be after our consultation with our members last year that we believe that the headline figure that we're campaigning for is 12.5%. Other trade unions have different positions, and I'm sure colleagues are aware of that, um, having um, been listening and following the, the, the productions you've been doing. However, um, when we got to the point of negotiating, we negotiated with the Scottish Government, and we got to a point where um, actually it was the day before Parliament was due to rise, we didn't have a negotiated settlement, and at that point, the Scottish Government made an offer. So it wasn't a negotiated offer, it was an offer that they made. That offer was what we would call a hybrid offer, so it offered different percentages to different groups of staff. And in, re in relation to the different percentages, so for um, bands one, two, three and four was a, a one-off payment. For bands five, six and seven, it was a percentage of 4%. And for bands eight and above, um, it was 2%, although anybody who was in the back in 8D and above it was capped at £800. And that, so the offer was a, um, a hybrid offer. It wasn't an offer across the board. So the RCN are campaigning um, for a 12.5, one, one off, i.e. for one year offer across the bands. So in respects of did that meet what we were campaigning for. No, it didn't meet what we were campaigning for. And what happened when the offer came in, it went to the Scottish Board, the Trade Union Committee and Council, who considered the offer and considered 
um, what we should do. So firstly, they considered should we ball uh, consult have a consultative ballot of our members. So th that was agreed. Mm -hmm. And then they considered the offer against what our asks are and against what our members are telling us. And it, remember, our board and trade union committee and council are, are made up of our members um, yeah. and they made the decision that we should recommend that our members reject the offer because it doesn't meet what we believe we should, uh, uh, what, what we're campaigning for. And indeed, um, it, it's, it, it's not where we think it, it should be. Therefore, we reckon the, the um, we recommended rejection to offer to, to the offer the Scottish government offer, which actually uh, has happened now. Yeah, no, thank you because I think like many people, I've seen lots of the headlines talking about the four percent pay offer. So you've really broken it down and explained how a hybrid offer works and why, in fact, it wasn't four percent across the board. So that's been really helpful. So one last question, and I don't know if it's an easy one for you to answer, but obviously here in Wales. We're watching what's going on in the other nations of the United Kingdom. Do you think that we're going to have to go to ballot here in Wales? And how would that happen? How would it work? Well, cl clearly we're all, um, for other parts of the UK, we're waiting for the peer review body to report and then to find out what the executives or the government in each countries do about that. So whether we'll reach um, ballot or not, that'll be for um, the boards in the respective countries um, you know, in, in essence, it'll be for the Welsh board and the, the other government structures now saying we have very clear processes on how we consider these matters and where the decisions are made in relation to our governance processes. I suppose for me, the thing is, you know, the, I, I had, um, I'm going to say, the privilege of going to Northern Ireland to work for a period of time um, through the period of leading up to and including industrial action. And the, the benefit of being, uh, you know, be part of a UK organisation is we learn from each other. So it's about learning at every opportunity, you know, when you do something like, whether it be a consultative ballot or whatever, we, we learn the lessons and we pass these lessons around. And I think, you know, like every organisation, we're getting better at that. So we're getting better every time we do something. So we learn. So, you know, I, I can't predict the future what's going to happen anywhere else in the UK. But what I can say is, you know, whatever we decide or whatever the RCN and the member, our members decide to do, we certainly um, learn from the processes that we've been through before to make sure that we try and get them to be the best that we can to respond to our members' needs. Excellent. Thank you, Colin. And it's always good to have that reminder that we are a member-led organisation. So everything that we're doing, whether it's in Scotland or in Wales, Northern Ireland or even in England, is, you know, at the mandate of our members. So thank you so much. It's been really interesting to hear from somebody in one of the other nations of the UK. You've given us such a detailed, helpful explanation of the process in Scotland. And so obviously, as you said, we will be looking and learning from your experience here in Wales. Thank you so much, Colin, and thank you for watching at home. Bye for now. Thank you, bye-bye.